And let's go ahead and get started. People will keep keep popping in. Um, so my name is Renee. My pronouns are he, him. I am on the unceded lands of the Ohlone people, also known as Oakland, California, in the States. Um, and I'm a core teacher at the East Bay Meditation Center. Um, I've been practicing for at least a couple decades now and teaching since 2016 at EBMC and other places. I also work as a restorative justice facilitator for an organization called the Ahimsa Collective, also here in Oakland. Um, yeah, I think it's just my second time being with you all and really appreciate being welcomed and invited back. So good to be with you all at this time. Um, and just, yeah, feeling the tenderness of being together as just holding everything that's happening as we're here in the very last days of 2023 which has been a lot and being with all of the conflict, oppression and genocide that is happening in our world right now. And um, yeah, and about to start another year, which I think is gonna also be a lot. I don't see how it could be other than that. So, so here we are, here we are coming together in community in these last days of 2023. Um, I'm going to invite us into a little practice, getting kind of grounded and resourced in the elements. And then we'll move into some conversation around ceasefire and how we're holding that in our relationship with the world, as well as in our relationship with ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and invite, invite us into practice as we move into, um, you know, practice for maybe 25 minutes together. Um, I invite you to make yourself comfortable. Find a position that really supports your practice. It could be lying down, standing, sitting, or even bringing in movement and feeling into whether it supports you to be on camera or off camera. Uh, this practice today is going to be one that brings in resource, brings in support. And um, so I invite you to, yeah, feel into what feels most supportive for this practice period. Maybe how could I be a little bit more comfortable or bring a little bit more ease to, to my body right now? I'm going to invite the bell to begin our practice. And as we move into this practice period, I also invite you to touch into a sense of intention for this practice today. Even just noticing, yeah, what brings me to practice right now? And there's no wrong answer to this question. I touch into my own longing for freedom, a longing that really includes the freedom of others as an integral part of my own freedom. There may be just the intention to meet ourselves in this moment be present and offer ourselves our full attention. It may also be an intention around 
bringing safety and protection for all, for all beings everywhere. Or just to, to find some moment of ease within our own body-mind. All of these are great reasons to practice. And I find just touching into this sense of intention brings energy into my own practice. The next invitation is to just bring awareness to your sensations. Maybe just bringing the simple awareness of having a body. Here is this body. Approaching it with some tenderness, some care. Maybe noticing how it is to be in a body in this moment. Noticing what's present. Sensations, thoughts, feelings. Allowing all of this to be here. And I invite you to find a, a way to just be with sensations that feels as easy as possible. Not um, pushing or forcing anything. Maybe there is a part of the body that feels neutral or even a little bit relaxed that could be a place to rest the attention. Or maybe finding a sensation that feels you know, more spacious. It could be bringing your attention to hearing or the sense of light and color and the vision. Just finding an, a place to rest, rest the awareness with as much ease as possible. maybe bringing, bringing awareness to the feet or just a place where your body is meeting whatever you're resting on, some sense of contact that feels solid, supportive. And we'll just take a minute or two in silence with Resting our attention wherever feels the easiest in this moment. Inviting or allowing for some settling in the awareness in this anchor. This anchor of our sensations.
as we continue into the practice, you can stay with this anchor and the sensations and just let my voice be a background. Or I invite you into bringing the element of earth into your awareness. First, noticing the element of earth beneath you, that there is literally this earth, our home, this land beneath us, supporting us. I'm just bringing that into your awareness, inviting a sense of connection with the earth, maybe feeling into the solidity of the earth, the vastness, the earthiness, the what the earth is made up of, dirt, roots, many creatures, rocks, somewhere deep below this hot molten core. Inviting this sense of the earth supporting us as a resource, a resource that we can tap into. Feeling the connection to the earth and feeling also how the earth element is a part of our own being our own body, some of these same elements make up our own body. This body has a weight to it, a solidity, a hard structure, bony structure within the skeleton. And feeling the connection between our body and this earth body, that the earth is beneath us and within us. We'll just take a minute or so in silence just to be bring our awareness to this element of earth, both internally and externally.
you may stay with your anchor or stay with this element of earth. Or if you feel ready, I invite you to bring to mind the element of water. First, starting with the water in our environment. We may be aware of the water flowing somewhere near us, in the ocean, lakes, rivers. Here where I am, the rain is coming down. I can hear it fall. There may be water running beneath us somewhere. We're in cities running through culverts and sewers. There may be water in the air, humidity. Just feeling this life-giving force of water around us, supporting us. Maybe there was a time recently when you were immersed in water, feeling it support you, hold you. Just touching into our connection to the element of water, the support and care we receive from this element of water. And inviting it also in our own body, our sensations, that we too, like this planet, our home, we are made up of largely water. The water liquid flowing through our veins. We may touch into it in our sensations, feeling the saliva in our mouths, maybe feeling the moisture under our eyelids. We may feel our pulse, just aware of this element of water within our own body. And perhaps the connection between the water element in our body and the water element around us. Inviting this element of water as a resource, a place of connection, home, care. Now I'll just take a minute or two in silence to be with this element of water in our awareness, both internally and externally. As we continue the practice, I invite you to stay with any element that has resonated with you, or if you feel ready to move on to bringing awareness to the element of air, beginning with just the awareness of being surrounded by this element of air. We may feel the air against our skin. Maybe we feel the temperature of the air or the movement of the air. We may also be aware of the ways that the plants and trees in our environment are 
breathing out this life-giving oxygen that we breathe in, nourishing us so directly in this reciprocal relationship of breathing, co-breathing our life together as we breathe in oxygen and breathe out that which the plants and trees need to breathe in and they breathe out this oxygen which we need for our life. Inviting also the sense of the air actually moving in and out of our lungs right now in this body. Maybe again, feeling the cooler air moving in, the warmer air moving out. Feeling this element of air externally and internally and this movement in between. We'll just take a minute or so in silence just to be with our awareness of this element of air and our awareness of the breath. It's continuing this awareness in silence for the next minute or so. And continuing our practice again, there's an invitation to stay with any of the elements that have resonated for you that feel supportive or to move into awareness of the element of fire. Inviting first this element of fire in the environment around us. It may be feeling the light or heat within our own space, maybe warm air or the light that's hitting our skin. You can also be aware of the warmth of the sun if we're someplace where the sun is still up aware of this hot core of the earth that warms the earth, warms the waters of our planet. And also bringing our awareness to the element of fire within us. You may have the sense of a core of warmth within our own body. Maybe feeling it in the belly or the solar plexus or the back, the hands. I can also feel the way the fire element shows up in our own impulse to movement, to action. We may feel that el this element of fire in our emotions, feelings, 
of purpose or anger, a response to injustice or oppression, this healthy response of fire. This is our life force within us, this fire. Feeling how it can bring us to right action, to stand up, to speak our truth. And just taking another minute or so in silence with this element of fire internally and externally. As we come towards the end of this practice of inviting the elements, I invite in one more element, the element of space, the space in which our awareness is held, the awareness of these other four elements are all held within the space of our being, our awareness. I also think of this element as the element of care, bringing care to the way all of these elements show up in my own awareness, care to all of my sensations, feelings, thoughts, that there can be this space, spaciousness, care, in which all of this is held and is another resource, another place of connection in this space, space of awareness. And finally bringing in the quality of gratitude, if that feels available. Just a gratitude for these elements of earth, water, air, fire, and space. Especially if they have shown up as a support and a resource to us in this practice. And knowing that they're available to us when we tune in to them. Just offering back some gratitude for this resource, for this support, this care. I'll invite in the sound of the bell to close our practice.
Thank you for joining me in that practice. It's definitely one of my resourcing practices to tune in to one or more of the elements. Often it's just one tuning into the earth where I also do a lot of practice with water, feeling the resource of water. Um, so happy to share this practice with you all. Um, and also I wanted to bring this practice in because it really is a way of very concrete way that I practice with a part of um, the teachings on the four foundations of mindfulness as they are offered in the Satipatthana Sutta, um, which is Satipatthana is, um, you know, more or less this kind of awareness of mindfulness or foundation in mindfulness or remembering would be another way to say, like remembering awareness. Um, there's many different ways those words can be translated. Anyway, there is in this text um, within the, um, at least within the Pali Canon, the, the teachings of the Buddha that were written down some hundreds of years after the time that he was alive and teaching, there's this, um, so there's this phrase that's repeated in this teaching that is inviting us to really feel our mindfulness internally. If, for instance, if we're bringing, my, working with mindfulness of the body, that we're aware of the body internally, or aware of the body externally, and aware of the body both internally and externally. And I feel like it's a part of the teachings that I have found like really exciting um, and a little bit counter to the way that I feel like mindfulness is often taught. Often it's like mindfulness is this very internal experience that we're bringing our awareness to just to ourselves. And I think the invitation in the sutta is to connect with the world like i often practice it in terms of relationships like bringing my mindfulness to just being in relationship to my connection with others um and so like giving someone else my full attention giving myself my full attention and seeing if i can do both at the same time which is like definitely advanced practice um and then i do this practice with the elements feeling the presence of the elements both externally and internally if I can both at the same time and I've just been thinking about this teaching in terms of um the genocide that's happening right now in Palestine and Gaza um again thinking about like how does this show up in my practice, these events of the world that are so like present for me, so breaking my heart. Um, and I feel like I do like want to connect this to the teachings because one of the things I've been noticing, maybe you all have noticed some of this too, is that there's within Dharma spaces, sometimes there's like just no conversation happening around this conflict and it feels to me like how can I be mindfulness in this moment and aware mindful and aware of what's happening in the world and not in some way be called to respond to that so much of my own practice is kind of what I think of as the bodhisattva path and for me that's really a vow to um to like bring an end to violence and the fear of violence in any way that I can. And very often that is like ending the violence within me, of course, because there is like violence I do to myself. There's, you know, um, ways that I'm harsh 
with myself. There's ways that it shows up in my relationships, noticing myself making someone else into the enemy or um, in various subtle ways, um, creating this opposition or um, not seeing someone else as a full human, whatever that may be. But in this time when there's, um, you know, at least for me in the States, like I feel complicit, you know, it is my country that is making this genocide of the Palestinian people possible without the participation of the US, without the funding of the US and the political support, there would be, this war would not be possible. Um, the siege that is going on right now would not be possible. So it feels like, as I feel into myself, it's like there is, I need to take some kind of action to do what I can to at least speak my truth and um, stand up in ways that I can stand up and that, you know, is going to look really different for all of us. Um, but I like, I want to bring it into the context of practice and I want to bring it into the context of mindfulness and awareness because I feel like pushing it out and saying, oh, you know, we can't take a position on this. We don't, you know, we have compassion for all people or any way that we're kind of like flattening what's happening to be like a conflict um, between two parties is, you know, it's an erasure of what's happening um, in terms of the really disproportionate power that Israel has with the backing of the U.S. and other countries, well, mostly just the U.S. now, since everyone else is waking up around this. Um, you know, the really just being clear about what's happening and that what is happening, the siege and the killing, continued killing of um, civilians, women and children, just like has to stop. So I feel like I wanna, um, yeah, I wanna bring this into the Dharma to say that we can both hold a boundary. We can say like, this has to stop. I have to like make whatever, um, you know, talk to my representatives, take action, protests, um, whatever I can do and everyone can do different things and all of those things are really valuable. It may also be like talking to people um, and sharing information, it may be um, getting resources to people. Like there's so many different things and I don't wanna create any hierarchy of what we can do, but um, to say that like part of this awareness of what's happening in our world, like um, to not take some kind of action is, feels to me like a bypass of what's happening, a bypass of like just our awareness of the circumstances. Okay, let me pause. Cause there were like some quotes I was gonna say. I just like, um, <laughs> Uh, oh, I was going to bring in, um, I know folks are familiar with Tanisara and her book, Time to Stand Up, which is a lot about the ways, you know, she really talks about ways that um, Buddhist, Buddhism here in the West is like not addressing other big issues. You know, this was some years ago that it came out, particularly around the climate. But she says here, um, generally speaking, Unlike the historical Buddha who brought about radical systemic change within the society in which he lived, the institution of present day Buddhism tends to be a conservative force, which seeks a transcendent inner path rather than one of outward engagement. So this is like really showing up right now in our especially Western convert Buddhist centers. And I just want to challenge that that's like, that that itself is like some kind of um, 
you know, embodiment of compassion or like giving equal voice to people. I just want to challenge that notion. Um, and to challenge that, I want to bring in a quote actually from Martin Luther King. There's a speech that he made called When Peace Becomes Obnoxious. And he was talking about an event that happened in um, at the University of Alabama. So at this time when the University of Alabama was being desegregated, or there was an attempt to desegregate, there was a young woman who um, enrolled as a student, a young black woman named Authorine Lucy. And she enrolled in classes and begun the, the semester. Um, and, you know, as soon as she was on campus, there were all of these, um, you know, white supremacist protesters and everywhere she went, every class she went to, there were people were, you know, yelling at her, throwing things, just really, really awful. And so the University of Alabama, their solution was to expel her from the university. And then um, there was like this headline in the newspaper, peace reigns on the campus of the University of Alabama. Like that was their solution to this, you know, challenge to white supremacy was just to double down again on white supremacy. And um, so Dr. King condemns this calm, this quiet or peace as the type of peace that stinks in the nostrils of Almighty God. And um, he goes on to say, yes, it is true that if the Negro accepts his place, accepts exploitation and injustice, there will be peace, but it would be an obnoxious peace. And what he is pointing to here is that like this appearance of peace is actually oppression. You know, if it appears quiet, if it looks quiet, it's not because there's not conflict. It's because that conflict's been suppressed violently. And so I think in our Dharma spaces, when it appears that there's not conflict over what's happening in Palestine and Gaza, that is not peace. That is the suppression of a conflict. And just because a conflict's below the surface doesn't mean it's not a conflict. Um, so I just felt like that, um, that speech for me really spoke to, in some ways, what happens sometimes in our own Dharma communities, that things just get pushed down and that doesn't in any way make them go away. So then, you know, the question is like, um, I think the question that's been on my mind is, is how do we work for ceasefire? How do we um, like, I think it would, you know, in some ways it would also be a bypass if we only took action externally. At least in my, in, I'm just saying this in my body and my awareness that I know that within me, there's also this, like an impulse to make people into the enemy. I notice it like within my own family. I have family members who are Zionists and like we have really, really different views. And there is a way that I could be making them into the enemy right now, making them into someone who like is really a problem in my life. And um, so I think that's a place where I just like notice that within myself, notice that like just contraction before going to visit, like, oh my gosh, how are we gonna get through this? We feel so differently about this. Um, and still wanting to show up in those relationships with care um, and even with care for the ways that um, like the hurt and suffering that leads 
my family members to feel the way that they feel about the conflict, to feel like it's justified. It's like, I can't in myself even imagine how one could feel it's a justified war, but I can have compassion that there is, that that's something that's coming out of an experience of hurt and fear for them. Um, so is it possible, and this is kind of like holding a paradox, is it possible to genuinely have compassion for all, um, like all views and perspectives without bypassing? And I think, you know, I'm just holding it as the question. I don't even have the answer. And I'm trying to find within myself this place of like, can I hold compassion um, for Israelis as much as for Palestinians right now without a bypass? And what I find in myself is if I'm speaking my truth, if I'm taking the action that I can take, if I'm showing up in the ways that I can show up, I think I there is room for that compassion, but that is a very different invitation to compassion than the invitation to compassion that's silencing conflict. So I just wanna make a real distinction between those two invitations to compassion. And um, yeah, and I think, I feel like this opportunity, like this is the opportunity all the time, but maybe more so while we're in such intense conflict, um, like within our communities around who's saying what, who's standing up for what. Um, it is an opportunity to like work on this internal ceasefire as we also work for the external political project of ceasefire. And for me, that's like really looking also at the ways that I judge myself you know, a real theme that has come up for me in this is like, oh, I'm not doing enough. Like my friends are out getting arrested and I'm not getting arrested for, you know, reasons that I actually think are good reasons for me. And also I will notice the way that I judge myself or, and I also fear judgment from others that I'm not doing the most, you know, intense thing. Um, so can I like offer compassion to myself? Can I like um, not attack myself in those moments? Um, and I wanna bring in a quote from Kai Cheng Tom. If you all know of her, um, she's an amazing, um, person who talks a lot about love and justice and pleasure based in Toronto, a uh, trans woman of color. Um, so she talks about the way that um, we can notice when there's external conflict that there is also internal conflict. And this, I've been sort of working with this observation that she's made and I have found that to be true pretty much every time. Every time I notice that I'm involved in some external conflict, I notice that within me, there's also internal conflict. So it could be just this example of like judging myself for not doing enough to end the siege in, in Gaza. And that's a place where there's some internal conflict um, that might also manifest in maybe judging others or maybe like distancing myself from someone who I think is judging me. Um, within this, there's like some separation or there's some contraction. Um, so can I just notice that internal conflict and, and be like, what can I do here to meet this internal conflict to see what needs I have that are arising that I can, maybe there are some that I can meet though I can't resolve the conflict as we just often can't resolve the external conflict, it is often also true that we can't resolve the internal conflict, but we can be present for it and we can bring our attention to it. And to me, that is an act of compassion, is to bring simple, pre simple presence without trying to fix or resolve. 
the situation because it may be unfixable and unresolvable. You know, I mean, for instance, I'm not going to resolve white supremacy in my lifetime. I don't know that we're going to resolve the conflicts in Palestine. And I mean, I don't know what the resolution is. So can we bring compassion to ourselves being within the tension of a conflict that's not resolved and maybe not resolvable? Um, let me see if there's anything else here. Yeah, just kind of um, bringing in this quality of compassion as just simply the present, being present with suffering. And um, another thing that Kai Cheng Tom says that's been really helpful to me is when we put compassion and curiosity together, we often get conflict de escalation. So I sort of ask myself in that, oh, can I offer that to myself? Can I offer myself compassion and curiosity? Can I offer others compassion and curiosity? Not trying to resolve the conflict, but maybe just bringing it down a few notches um, in this kind of invitation to de-escalate the conflict. Yeah, so I'm curious um, just to open up to see if folks, you know, how are you, how are you managing the internal and external ceasefire? What's supporting you in this? Um, how are you holding the paradox? Yeah, I just wanted to open up and see if folks have anything, any questions or anything that you would like to share in the space.